Today, as I mentioned, you probably noticed the sanctuary looks just a little bit different. And today we wanted to pause and say one of our most important ministries is the ministry to children. And Pastor Anna leads us, along with so many of you who are her right hand and strong arm, in so many ministries to our children. And we say thank you, thank you to you today. You know who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness in so many ways. But today, Pastor Anna is going to be leading us so we all get to go to children's church today. Amen. Yes, that's right. Um, I get to teach, I get to teach children's church um, on most Sundays. We don't have children's church on the first Sunday of the month when we have communion because I think it's really, really important that kids and parents and families and church family as a whole, even those that are with us online, take communion together because it's communion. So we're communing with God and each other. Amen? Really important. So um, the first song that we sang, I want to go back. To Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. Do you know that song? Like, not the one that they were singing, but the Jesus Loves Me song that's in the hymnal. <laughs> you guys know that? That's what we're doing. Today we're going back to talk about how Jesus loves us. And Jesus loves us through the stories that he gave us in his word. And I have to tell you that when I am preaching to the parents and the grandparents... I, I love it. I, I thank God every day that he's called me to bring his word. But I get a little different when I'm with the kids. I get a level of energy. So I just want to say that ahead of time, almost as a disclaimer. I get super pumped when I get to talk to kids. Um, so glory be to God for, I just thank him for calling me to do that and to, and to bring his word to you today. So a few months ago, we had some friends that got married. They're in this room right now. Raise your hand. <laughs> That's right. Where's your husband? Oh, we don't even know. So he was up here singing earlier. Okay. A few months ago, Rebecca and Jason got married, and we gave them a gift. The Merlos gave them a, a wedding gift. And they sent us, Rebecca and Jason, they sent us a thank you card in the mail. And inside of the card, it said, thank you for the gift. It was just what we needed for our new home together. And I, I just want you to know, it made me feel really good that you sent me that note to say thank you. Have you ever gotten a thank you note and you're like, oh, this is nice. Yeah, this is nice. They gave me a thank you note. They said thank you. Now, I want to, there he is. You're back. I was just talking about you and you weren't in the room. Okay. Uh, that happens a lot in kids' church. I've got to go to the bathroom, so they get up and leave. Um, but anyway, <laughs> love you, Jason. Uh, so I want to ask you kids that are in the room, I'm talking to the kids right now, the actual kids that are like 11 and under and so on, maybe even you teenagers, do your parents say to you when someone says something nice to you or they give you a gift or whatnot for your birthday, now what do you say? And you say, oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, my kids are older and I still occasionally be like, did you, what did you say? And they have already said thank you. Like, I'm telling them to do something they've already done. I have a tendency to do that. But, yeah, don't you hate it? Like, you're ready to say thank you, and somebody's like, what do you say? Now, let me ask you, parents, are you that parent? Do you do that? Are you like, what do you say? And the kid has, <laughs> Jason is actually making his mom raise her hand. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. You find yourself doing that. Well, the truth is we all know what to say. But, unfortunately, it kind of slips our minds somehow, sometimes. We forget to say it. Lois brought up a couple of examples of this. You get somewhere, you've prayed to God, God keep me safe. Many of you said you pray for protection, you pray for safety, you pray for healing. Well, we should. We should pray for all of those things. But when they happen, do we say to God, thank you for that thing? When you get to the place where you're supposed to be, like the, you're driving somewhere, do you stop in the parking lot and say, Thank you, God, that I got here safe. When you are sitting down, moms and dads, when you're sitting down to pay your bills once or twice a month or however often you do that, do you say, thank you, God, that I can do this? That I can do this? Maybe you're sitting there thinking, how can I do this? That is another opportunity to say thank you to God because I promise you, 
He will make a way. It may not be the way that you intended, but you can say thank you to God in every single instance. You're paying your bills. Thank you, God. When you have walked out of the grocery store with a cart full of groceries and you're loading them into your car, do you say thank you, God, for Kroger? Because I didn't have to pick this. I didn't have to... Well, I'm a meat eater, so I didn't have to kill this. Thank you, God, that they had it on the shelf, especially right now. Thank you, God, for Kroger. I tell you what, I'll drive down the road, I will see blue lights, and I will say, thank you, God, that it is not for me. (laughs) I know you're out there. I know you've done it. Say thank you to God. There was a time when my husband and I were driving two separate cars following one another, and he got pulled over, and I did not. Thank you, God. (laughs) Our Bible story today, the coffee even told him, well, it was either going to be you or her. Our Bible story today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 17. I read the Bible to the kids every Sunday morning, and I get so excited. And I want you to know, those of you that were raised in church, like me, and I thank God for that, sometimes we lose the awe factor for what the Bible says. But the stuff that's in here is like, wow, for real. Like David killed a giant, a nine foot tall dude, and that's real. That's amazing. Oh, I just get so, parting of the Red Sea, wow. Jesus is talking here, or he's doing, he's doing something. He's going to talk. Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into the village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. What did they have? Leprosy. How many? Ten. Very good. Stay with me. They had leprosy, they met him, and they stood at a distance far away from him. And they called out in a loud voice, and they said, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when they saw him, when he saw them, he saw them coming up. And when he saw them, he said, go, go, show yourselves to the priest. Five words. Is what Jesus had come out of his mouth. Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, after the five words, they were cleansed. Leprosy, gone. Five words out of the mouth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And one of them, how many? One. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, he came back, praising God in a loud voice, He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And Jesus asked, Hold up, Jesus says. Weren't there ten? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this guy, this foreigner? I think that Jesus got excited too. Then he said to him, to this Samaritan, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Oh my goodness, you guys, leprosy. What is leprosy? Do you even know what leprosy is? What's a leper? It is not this. <laughs> it is not an animal with spots. But it does have spots. This is a leopard. A leper, L-E-P-E-R, they do have spots, okay? A leper is a person who has a disease called leprosy. And the disease causes sores all over the body. And the sores are painful and they itch. There's a lot, very, very painful. And people 
that had leprosy back in Jesus' time could not go around the rest of the people in the town. They couldn't even be with their families. They couldn't get together on Sundays for family dinner. Nothing, nada, by themselves or with other lepers on the outside of the town. Okay? And they were even thought to be unclean. That's the word. And, and, when, and they were required to stay away. And when they did come around people, they had to say, unclean, unclean, so that the people would back up and stay at a safe distance. They had to live in groups by themselves. How would you feel if you were a person who had leprosy? Go ahead, tell me. How would you feel? Lonely. Unloved. Unloved. Outcast, yes, sad, lonely, unloved, outcast. Yes, that's how they would feel. In our Bible story, Jesus was walking through this, this small town, a small village, and he saw the ten lepers. So I need some volunteers. I need you. Raise your hand. Do you want to volunteer? Maggie? Logan? Jake, you've got your hand up. Come on, I see you. Dave? Somebody that's not related to me. Claire? Stephen? Come on, come on down, come on, just stand right down here. Yeah, 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 don't be shy. Carolyn, there you go. Who else? Uh, yeah, come on up, Kane. Who's that back there? Yes, come on back. Did I? Uh, yeah, yeah, K Hayden, you come too. My favorite twins that don't look like. All right, come on, how many do I have here? This isn't enough. Uh, okay, Myra, come on. My, Maya, oh, I want to say that. Maya and Myra, both of you, yeah. Can I say something? Earlier on the slides, uh, we had Myra's name, uh, but it was actually... My, it was, we had Myra's name, but it was Maya holding the box, and it was Myra holding the flag. That was my bad. Come on, Daring. There you go. All right, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's perfect. Good job, guys. All right, so I would like to have uh, Logan, and, and you go stand over here with Maggie. Go over there. And then the rest of you go stand over here. Is that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. All right. 10. Why do you think I chose them to do 10? All right. Think about that. Okay. So in the Bible story, Jesus is walking along the border between Galilee and Samaria, right? Now, Samaria, the people who live in Samaria, do not hang out with the Jews that live in Galilee. Bad, bad, bad. Jesus is not supposed to be talking to a Samaritan, and the Samaritan is not supposed to be talking to Jesus because Jesus was a Jew, and they were Samaritans, and you don't hang out. Okay, so Logan's going to be Jesus, and Maggie is going to be Jesus' follower, okay? And you guys are the ten lepers. Sorry, so you're itching, you got spots, and yeah, yeah, ooh, gross. You guys are the townspeople who are afraid of the lepers. Okay, so I want you guys to say, unclean, unclean. unclean, unclean. Stay away from us. Stay away from us. And then you guys say, ew, go away, gross. <laughs> okay, so now we all know what to do. And Jesus and his follower, he had lots of followers, but today it's just one. So Jesus, his follower, they come along. Come on, Jesus and follower. And you come up with these stuff right there. And then you guys you say, unclean. unclean okay, unclean. but... But, but, here comes somebody that has power. Amen? Amen. Jesus has power, and these guys know it, and they're going to say, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And the townspeople say, ooh, gross, go away. <laughs> and Jesus' his follower says, Jesus, I don't know about that. And these guys are saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Ooh, gross, gross, gross. I don't know about this one. All right. But Jesus walks up to the, Samarit or the lepers. Look at all these itchy, spotted people. And Jesus is just going, I don't care. I'm going out because I'm Jesus. And, um, and then Jesus says to them, go show yourselves to the priest. Go show yourselves to the priest. And then you guys turn and walk away. And as you walk away, you are healed. Oh, my gosh, look how happy they are. And then Jake, Jake is the Samaritan. Come here, Jake. 
He's, look at him. He's so excited. He's healed. And you guys are walking away back to your seats. And then Jake comes over to Jesus. And the Samaritan, he gets down on his knees. He throws himself at the feet of Jesus. And he says, thank you. Say, thank you. I'm healed. I don't have leprosy. The spots are gone. Amen. Jesus, say, rise and go. Amen. Very good. Good job, guys. There you go, Daring. You can go have a seat, buddy. Rise and go and show. You can go sit down, sweetie. Good job. Good job, lepers and townspeople and Jesus and Jesus' followers. Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. That's what he said. Your faith has made you well. The Lord is good. We have got to go back and say thank you. That is what we have to do. We have to go back and say thank you. This is a way of living. A way of living. God does so much for us. Every single day he provides everything that we need. Maybe not what we want. Like I said, I, do, I have prayed to God to help me find my keys. And I've had to buy a new key. <laughs> But God gives me what I need every single day. Sometimes the healing doesn't look like we want it to look. The healing doesn't look like what we expect it to look like. Lois mentioned if you have a cold and you wake up the next morning and all of a sudden you can breathe through your nose. Your immune system has done its thing. You are healed. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we take it for granted. We think, oh, I've got a strong immune system. I drank my orange juice. Thank you, Jesus, for oranges and vitamin C. Because God has given us these things. Don't neglect to thank the giver. Our one Samaritan, our healed leper, they were all healed. But Jake came back and he said, thank you, God. And that's what we need to do. He went back to the healer. Keep going back to the healer. That's what we've got to do. Let's stop right now, and we're going to say thank you to God, and we're going to do it in a fun way. Somewhere around you, you have a piece of paper and a pair of scissors, and I want you to take it out, okay? If you don't have it right in front of you, there's some on a seat somewhere near you. Just get up and walk around and find it. I want everybody to have a piece of paper and a pair of scissors. There's some down here in the front. Raise your hand if you don't have it, and I will have Jesus' follower bring it to you. Everybody's good. Okay. So I want you to take your paper, and I want you to fold it in half. It doesn't matter if it's horizontal or uh, vertical. Fold it in half. And take your scissors. Does everybody have a pair of scissors? If you don't have a pair of scissors, let me know, and Jesus' follower will bring it to you. Amen. Are you a Jesus follower? Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So what we're going to do is take our scissors, and we are going to, on the binding side, the folded side, the folded side, I want you to start there with your scissors, okay? Start on the folded side. And I want you to, if you need to draw this, To do it well, that's fine. There's a marker somewhere near you as well. Or if you just can cut it out, that's fine. We're cutting half a heart, okay? Just half a heart. I want you to cut along the folded side. Cut your half a heart. Everybody got that? And then you can open it up and you'll see that you have made a lovely heart. And if you've done it, if you're finished, raise your hand and show me your heart. I love it. Good job, Angie. Good job. Good job, Elizabeth. Good job, Dave. Very good job, Mary Kay. Good job, Adrian. Very good, Debbie. Good job, Kara. Very good, Rebecca. Jason's heart is tiny. What it look? But that's very good. I love it. Good job. Very good, Claire. Oh, good job, Sarah. Good job. Very good. Very good, Amy. Good job. Okay, everybody did a great job. Now, I want you to... Good job, Val. 
I want you to take your heart and your marker. I actually don't have a marker up here, but you do. You have markers. Okay. Take, and I want, what I want us to do is take your marker, and I want you to write on the inside of your heart, thank you, Jesus. And you can say for something in particular, if you've got something on your heart, thank you, God, for getting me safe here this morning in the snow. Thank you for the air that I breathe. Or if you don't want to say a specific thing, just say thank you, Jesus, because he knows. The Bible says that Jesus goes to God on our behalf and prays. Holy Spirit, pray for us. Holy Spirit, be with us. Thank you, Jesus. Has everybody got it done? All right, good job. Good job, Jake. Good job, Daring. Very good. I am so proud of you all. You're doing awesome. You're good at crafts. The praise team's going to come up. The praise team's going to come up. I'm going to pray for us first. And, and while I'm praying, the praise team's going to come up. And we're going to sing another. Good job, Caden. I love it. And we're going to pray. We're going to sing a song. And this song is called, As for Me in My House, I Will Serve the Lord. And I hope and pray that you parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles, your kids may be here, they may not be here, that you will lead your kids, lead your people to know Jesus and to thank him every day. Because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what we're going to pray. And while we're singing, while we're singing, Aren't we thankful for our praise team? Thank you, Jesus, for our praise team. I thank you, Jesus. While they're singing, I want you to bring your heart to Jesus' feet, like that Samaritan did. Okay? Bring it down. Lay it on the altar. You can lay it on the altar rails. You can lay it on the steps, wherever up here. That's, we're going to symbolically give our thank you hearts to Jesus today. Just come up and lay it on the lay it up here while we're singing, and then you can go back to your seats. Amen. <laughs> 